Hey everyone and welcome to Upcycled Adulting where I am here to help you upcycle your real life into your best life by creating healthy habits, growing to accomplish your goals, and overcoming obstacles. Now today I want to talk about how to stop people pleasing. Listen, this is an innate thing. A lot of us have been conditioned to people please. A lot of us were actually raised to people please, right? Most of our motivation for doing things growing up was to please our parents or make them proud. And that is really essential to survival. Humans are pack animals. It's very important for people to feel like they are connected with a community, like they are accepted, like they have some safe space among other people. And for that reason, a lot of us tend to people please. Now, people pleasing can be profoundly problematic when it starts interfering with your ability to show up as your authentic self or to find your true identity. This is a huge reason why people struggle to find themselves, why people feel like they lost themselves in the first place. And this is a big barrier in you living an intentional life, accomplishing your goals, identifying what you need, and generally feeling proud of yourself and fulfilled. If you are spending your time people-pleasing, it is deeply connected to your own personal feelings about yourself. And I think it's really important to recognize that you are not going to find your self-worth through the acceptance or approval of other people. Your self-worth comes from within you. You have it. You were born knowing you were worthy. You were born feeling of value. But somewhere along the way, that's usually conditioned out of us. So today I want to talk about the five things that will help you stop people pleasing because y'all we all hear it all the time stop people pleasing i need to stop people pleasing but let's talk about how to actually do that so number one is to practice self-acceptance and recognize your own worth. Now, this might involve creating affirmations, it might involve having a mantra, um, but it will definitely involve creating space for you to get curious about or observe things about you that maybe are a little uncomfortable. A lot of times the reason why we struggle with our own self-worth is because we feel a lot of shame or a lot of embarrassment about things we know about ourselves. And so we think, well, I just need to change that because I don't like that. I don't think anybody else will like that. I don't want anybody else to see that. But the reality of the situation is that you are uniquely you. You are uniquely you, even with the little things that you may think are huge things, all right? You are uniquely you, and you, uniquely yourself, are valuable. The things about yourself where you think, wow, I really want to grow in that area, or wow, I really want to address that thing, those aren't bad things about you. They're not problematic things about you. There are spaces and opportunities for you to grow, for you to learn, for you to inspire other people, inspire yourself. You do not need to be afraid of the things about you that maybe make you feel a little uncomfortable. And I understand that because y'all, when I stopped living to please everybody else and showing up as who they wanted me to be, I found out that there were some things about me that I was like, yeah, I'd like to do a little work around that. But I also found out that there were some things about me that I felt ashamed of or that I felt were really problematic and that I was hiding that were actually a very normal experience and that I really needed to embrace about myself, that I just needed to accommodate a little bit, that I just needed to look at in a different light. There's nothing wrong with the fact that I'm a night owl. There's nothing wrong with me being a little socially awkward. There's actually nothing wrong with that. Me being constantly afraid that other people were going to judge me as lazy or think I was weird and not like me, that was debilitating, absolutely debilitating. But when I came to a place where I could say, yeah, this is who I am, and no, I'm not lazy, and yes, I've had the same goal for 20 years and failed to accomplish it, but it's not because something's wrong with me. It's because this system doesn't work for me. And that doesn't make me wrong. It doesn't make me bad. It doesn't make me a problem. And I don't have to go and 
be like somebody else or seek someone else's acceptance or approval so that I can understand myself and take care of myself well and live intentionally and feel supported, right? Number two is to learn how to trust yourself and your intuition. So in this space where I was so beating myself up about not having enough willpower and self-discipline and all of that, and by the way, I have a whole video on why willpower, self-discipline, and um, motivation are actually potentially sabotaging our goals as we understand them. Um, But in that space where I was beating myself up about that, I couldn't hear my own voice. I couldn't lean into this is what you really need. Now, I knew it inside of me as soon as I stopped accepting those ideas, as soon as I stopped rejecting my own acceptance of myself, as soon as I stopped calling myself names, as soon as I started trusting myself, I was actually able to figure out, oh, this is why this isn't working for you. And this is what you need instead. And by the way, most people actually can't even do this. And this is what almost everybody needs instead. You're not even alone in this, right? And it gave me a space to actually listen to my intuition and to try new things and to create a space where I started to really trust myself. Trusting myself helped make me, me, my voice, the loudest voice. And it enabled me to stop people pleasing because I didn't feel like I needed other people to show me what to do, right? Because I had always felt like I need to do what they're doing. I need them to think I'm like them. I need them to see me like them. I lived in a profound amount of shame growing up, hiding what my home life was like and trying to pretend to be just like all the other kids. And the reality is a lot of people were going through what I was going through. When I started sharing my story, people were like, me too. I feel like you're telling me my own life story because the reality is we're all so busy trying to put up a front and please others and be acceptable and be likable and be all these things that we're losing touch with ourselves. All right. So when we pull back into ourselves and say, I want to be the loudest voice in my life. I want to be the author of my own story. It helps us get our priorities in order. So instead of being like, they are going to dictate to me and I'm just going to go along with that. We start to be able to get our priorities in order. In addition, y'all, benefit of this, we start to see red flags of the people in our life who are potentially not healthy and trying to control our behavior or put us into the box or keep us very confined. And those behaviors in our relationships are actually very unsafe for us because the truth is the only person who wants you to trust them more than you trust yourself is a person who doesn't have your best intentions in mind. All right. That's just the reality. Number three is to pause. Creating a space to pause was really particularly important for me. I've talked about this in videos in the past. I have a hearing impairment and I have some auditory processing challenges. So I found myself agreeing to things or going along with things when I didn't necessarily take the time to fully process what I was agreeing to. It helped me a lot to have someone else to kind of pin this on at first. So early in my marriage, a lot of times if I needed a pause or midway through my marriage, when I was, my partner was like, you are overcommitting and doing way too much and this is bad for you. And I see you doing this and I'm concerned about you and your safety. Isn't anything in you telling you to stop doing this? Anyways, yes, but I was just ignoring it. Um, I remember at the time that I would respond a lot of times with, I need to check with my partner. I need to see what our family calendar looks like. Because Not because I needed to check with my partner, but because I needed a pause, right? And so I found a space where I was able to say, yep, I'm going to pause here. I'm not going to just go along with this. And I do it in other conversations as well. Sometimes I rehearse the conversations because that can be really helpful for me, especially in the beginning where I was really struggling with wanting to people please. So my youngest sister, adore my youngest sister, and she has recommended many, many books to me. She's an avid reader. I love reading also, but she recommended a book series to me that she absolutely loves. 
And I do not like it. I read the first book. I got 20 pages in the second. I was like, I can't, I just don't like the book series, right? It's very, very popular. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Um, but if you ask in my Facebook group, maybe there, but I don't want to put it on blast on YouTube. And I don't want all the hate comments because it's super popular. At any rate, and so she asked me, she was like, oh my gosh, are you reading the books? Don't you love them? Blah, blah, blah. And usually, even though I'd stopped reading the books, I'd say, oh yeah, they're so amazing. And then when she asked later, so have you started book three yet? I'd be like, oh no, I just got really busy. And I wouldn't tell her that I'd stopped reading the books and that I was reading something totally new. And I would just kind of hope the conversation would die because I wouldn't want her to know because I would feel like maybe I was going to hurt her feelings or this was a way in which this would be an issue in our relationship or she would think that I was weird. Okay. This is a real thing that happens. Some of you are pretending, all right, that you love the color that your living room is painted because your partner loves it and you don't want to be seen as you know, the squeaky wheel or the problem or disagreeable. And so you're like, oh yes, I absolutely love that color green. Even though you know, some of you are doing this consistently. This is a way in which we people play, please, a way in which we show up inauthentically. So I knew that this was going to come up because she knew I had started the books. And so I just took the pause. I took the moment to kind of collect myself in a way that I was feeling like I'm going to be honest with her that I don't, that these books are not something I'm into. Right. And so I told her, I said, Oh, I read all of book one. I got just a couple chapters into book through and I book two, and I'm just, I really can't get into it. It's really just not my thing. Like you, you always recommend the best books, but for whatever reason, these ones just aren't hitting with me. And she said, Oh, it's always like that in the beginning of each of the new books in the series. But if you push through, I think that you'll really like it. And I said, you know, usually right here, come on, y'all, you know what I would usually do. I would force myself to continue reading this book. That's what I would have done. Okay. My people pleasing way would have been like, no, she's really disappointed. I really need to finish reading this book. I need to, I just wasn't into it. I struggled even with the first book. So instead I was like, well, it's just really not fitting like the typical thing that I like to read. I'm glad that you love them so much. I'm so glad that you love them so much. I'm so glad that you recommended it. It's like 90% of the time we love the same books, but there's always going to be that one off. Okay. Now, mind you that, again, this is a very popular book series. My sister has a hundred people. There's probably actually Facebook communities and fan groups everywhere probably even fan YouTube channels for this, this book series. It's okay. I didn't like that particular series. Now my sister's made other recommendations for books to me since then. She hasn't just decided that I no longer get to be in the loop. If she's watching this video right now, she's probably actually shocked that this was challenging. Actually, she's probably not shocked because we grew up in the same family. So she might have some people pleasing challenges herself. When you pause, you get that space that you need to maybe kind of construct a, this is what I want to say here. See, not people pleasing doesn't mean that we're being rude. It doesn't mean that we're rejecting other people. It doesn't mean that we're being disrespectful. Not people pleasing is simply saying, I can only control myself. I can only control my choices, my behaviors, my reactions. I am in charge of me. You are in charge of you. I am not in charge of you. I'm not going to pretend that I am. I'm not going to pretend that it's my job. I'm not going to try to, y'all, this is hard. I'm not going to try to manipulate you into liking me. Your approval of me doesn't matter more than my approval of me. This is really important to get our heads around. Okay. And so when we create that pause, we prevent that automatic knee jerk reaction of, yes, I'll help you move. And this doesn't mean that we never do the thing. Sometimes we do things for our friends or our family members or um, any moms out there. All right. Moms know we have done many things for our children that we would have preferred not to do. Maybe we didn't want to do them at all. Um, stomach flu, 
Who wants to deal with that? Nobody. Okay. But we make those choices because they align with our bigger values or our big picture, right? We say the big picture is I love my kid and they're sick and they need help and I can help them. I value my relationship with them. So I want to show up for them, even though I don't really want to be doing this thing. No one wants to move their kid into the college dorms up three flights of stairs. Done it so many times. Okay. No one's like, yes, sign me up for that. I want to carry heavy things up three flights of stairs in the rain for half of a day, for hours. No one is like, I'm so excited to do that, but we do that because we love our kids and we value them and we want to show up for them, right? So taking the time to pause really matters. Now, this next one's going to help you a lot with discerning between where you're people pleasing and where you're showing up because it reflects a bigger value. Because I feel like when I say that, some people are like, oh, free ticket to say I'll help all my friends move because I value the relationship. No, that's not a pass for that. Number four is to be very mindful of the word should and to always rephrase it. Uh, Listen, just always rephrase it because even if it doesn't need to be rephrased, it's okay. You'll figure that out. But if you try to rephrase it every single time, a lot of times you'll get a better dig. All right. So what do I mean by that? If you think in your mind, I'm going to help my friend move because I should. The next thing you want to ask yourself is why? Why should I? Because that's what a good friend does. Why? Or how does this align with your connection to this person or what you want the relationship to be or what else you have going on in the rest of your life or your own goals or your own situation? All right. So this happened years ago um, in my friend group that one of our friends was really ill and another one of our friends was connected with her family more and was the only person in the friend group who was allowed by the family to be present. And because of that, because she was the only friend support system, she almost was living with our friend for months and had her own kids and her own husband because she really felt like she should do this. And she also very much wanted to be present for this friend. She wanted to have that time with her. What happened though, is that now she says everything fell apart at home because not stopping for a moment and thinking I should be here for my friend. I even want to be here for my friend. However, in the big picture of my life, are there other things that need to be happening? Are there other things that are needing to be dealt with so that they're not neglected. If that step had ta- had happened where she looked at the should and went, yes, I should be there for my friend. Why? Because I want to be there for my friend at this time. What else is going on? How does this fit in the big picture? Oh, I have these challenges going on in my own family and I'm needed in my own family in these ways. Then she could have created boundaries about either how much she showed up for the friend or she could have asked for support from the other people in the friend group who all wanted to help, right? So she could have leaned into other people and said, listen, I'm the only one that the family is allowing to be present here in this difficult time. And so I would like to be there as much as possible for our friend. However, I have these things that I could really use a hand with. A lot of times when we get into people pleasing mode, we forget about the other things that are already on our plate. We ignore those. We just go right with that immediate, yes, I'll do that. Yes, I'll be there. Even when we really want to be there, stepping back and saying, I am the person I need to be most concerned about pleasing and caring for. I am most responsible for me. So what is my stuff here? And how can I potentially lean into other people to get that stuff? And creating that community really, really matters. 
a lot of times when people struggle with people pleasing, they also struggle with asking for help. Non-reciprocal relationships are not tolerated by healthy people. Okay, I, I'm going to repeat that because it's so important. Non-reciprocal relationships are not tolerated by healthy people because a healthy person feels uncomfortable showing up for you or being there for you or doing things for you over and over and over again and you not doing them back and vice versa. I know I just called you unhealthy. See, you are doing that because you don't have the self-acceptance and the self-worth. You don't trust yourself and your intuition. You're doing that because you're not feeling healthy in yourself. And so you are seeking acceptance and love from outside of yourself because you can't give it to yourself. The other person who's constantly receiving, they also are not healthy. I need to just clarify this. If you have these kinds of imbalanced relationships or you have these relationships where you only show up for each other when it's hard, okay, right? We know what those are, the misery loves company relationships, or you have to show up in a certain way for that relationship to happen. That is not healthy. And if you continue people pleasing, you cannot create healthy relationships. So rephrase the word should. Take that moment, okay? Should why? Should because this is meaningful to me and aligns with my values. Should because I want to pour into this relationship in a balanced and safe and healthy way. Or should because I don't want them to talk about me, disappointed in me, end the relationship because I told them no, reject me. Those are not healthy reasons to show up that way in the relationship. And number five, connecting right to this, is to be mindful of who you are engaging in relationships with. Take a moment and think about who in your life you consistently show up for, but they don't reciprocate in a healthy way, okay? And I say in a healthy way because there are people in my life who also show up for me, but then they hold it over my head later, right? Well, I did blank for you, so now you owe me. And you owe me in this way this moment. Or you are not allowed to be upset if I gossip about you behind your back because I helped you with that situation. No. When we start creating boundaries, when we start showing up as who we are, when we start doing the pause, when we start reframing the should, when we start being our own source of self-acceptance and we start trusting ourselves and loving ourselves more, we make room in our lives for healthy relationships. And a lot of times that means we need to reduce the amount of contact we have in unhealthy relationships. And generally speaking, what I have found is we need to decrease those unhealthy relationships before we have room in our lives for the healthy ones. So we need to step back. And listen, you don't need to make a decision about what's happening in that relationship. You can just step back. You can just say, I'm going to take the pause. I'm going to rephrase the should. I'm going to decide if this works for me or not. I'm going to make sure that the intentions I have about why I'm showing up here, why I'm saying yes to you, why I'm behaving this way in your presence are my very best intentions. They're about representing me and showing up in a healthy way in this relationship. They're not about you. They're about me. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of people who are not very healthy, a lot of people who are manipulating you, using you, doing things that are not to your benefit, they are going to back away because they're not getting what they want anymore. And if that's what they want, you don't really have that much room for them. The relationships that we have with people who are whole and healthy. And by the way, this doesn't mean that it's like this all the time or that they're perfect, okay? Who are not engaging consistent, consistently in people pleasing, have a depth of intimacy and connection that others do not. 
When we show up in those relationships with a pot of soup because somebody in the house is sick, that person doesn't feel like they owe you and you don't feel like you're obligated to do it next time somebody's sick. Okay. By the way, that one takes a minute, just so you know. You might the first time, but as you go forward, you won't. And maybe they don't show up with a pot of soup because cook making soup isn't their thing, right? Making soup's my thing. But they show up in some, some other way for you. And you can actually start asking each other for help and knowing that the other person is there because they want to be there. You see, one of the things about people pleasing that I really had to get my head around and it really, really mattered a lot for me and helped me break through this cycle was... I want people to know that when I say yes, I mean yes. I'm not saying yes because I don't want you to be mad at me. I'm not saying yes because I'm trying to win favor with you. I'm not saying yes when I really mean no. I want people to show up in my life because they want to show up in my life. Not because they're afraid I'll stop being friends with them if they don't. And you probably feel that way too. So act that way in your relationships. For real, act that way in your relationships. Think to yourself, would I want this person to agree just because they're a people pleaser? Would I want this person to tell me they loved the book and they're still reading the series, even if they didn't, just because they're a people pleaser? Or would I rather that they just tell me not my cup of tea? Love these books you've recommended, but that one just really wasn't my favorite. If somebody shows up to help me move, okay, I am aware that they're probably not like, yay, sign me up for lifting heavy things upstairs, but they're showing up because they feel like I am your friend. I want to be here to support you and help you in this big change in your life or in this move in your life. I want to be part of that with you, right? And I can, and I'm not ripping off my right arm to do it. And I'm not here and feeling like I shouldn't be here or I don't want to be here, but I really had no choice. I had to say yes. That's not what I want. That is never what I want. When someone says no to me, and I know that this can be hard. So same sister, I had a scenario last night. I had an emergency in my family. I had to go pick up my youngest from school, from college. And it was like 1030 at night and I had to drive to get them. I texted my sisters because I was like, this is my husband is generally in bed at this time. And I was like, I shouldn't go by myself. The roads are a little rough and it's late. And my sisters responded and they could not do it. My one sister had, both of my sisters actually had meetings early this morning, okay? Knowing that they felt like they could tell me no, knowing that they felt like I can say I can't do that. I would, but I can't. I have something for my job I need to do. I have something for one of my kids I need to do and I can't do that. Okay. I know that they both would love to show up for me, that they would have loved to do the drive and be in the car and girl talk for a couple. I know that it makes me feel better to know that the next time I ask for something, if they say, yes, I can do that. They really mean it. I'm not sitting there the whole time wondering, do they wish they were somewhere else? Are they just here because they don't want me to be mad at them? You have to give that gift to someone else. And the way you give that gift to someone else is by not people pleasing and by telling people no. All right, that's it. You just say, no. Nope. By the way, you can also use this free phrase. I agree to disagree with you. Like, let's just agree to disagree. We don't agree. We don't agree on this political thing, but that doesn't mean I don't love you. We don't agree on this thing. We, my sister and I don't agree on this book, on this book series, okay? We agree to disagree. We do nothing she says is going to convince me that I'm going to like this book series and nothing I say is going to convince her that this book series and sucks. That's just my personal opinion. And listen, I'm in the minority. Again, I have to tell you this. These are best-selling books. I am in the minority. Okay. I know that 
but I still don't like them. I still don't like them and I don't have to lie about it to be in a relationship. And you don't either. Remember to subscribe to this channel. I am always here helping you upcycle your real life into your best life because you deserve to be living your very best life. You are absolutely 100% amazing. Bye everyone.